Hi, I'm Brian Van from SportBikeTrackGear.com, and today we're going to do a video review on a brand new helmet to our shop that we're really excited to offer. It is the Schuberth S2 Full Face Helmet. Schuberth has been making helmets for 90 years. That is a long time. They don't do just motorcycle helmets. As I understand it, the power sports part is about 30% of their overall business. They do a lot of occupational helmets, police ride helmets, you know, lumber, you know, occupational style helmets. But the reality is head protection is head protection and you're trying to protect the wearer from various forms of impact. So you learn a lot, even building all the other products that help them build a finer product for the power sports. This particular helmet I'm holding here, I'm sure you've heard of Michael Schumacher. I think everybody at this point on the planet has heard of Michael Schumacher. He was heavily involved in the development of this full face helmet, as well as another one that we'll be talking about at a later date. Let's kind of hit the bullet points here. Sizing for this helmet. I measure at 58 centimeters, dead bang. Intermediate oval head form. I chose a medium. This is actually my helmet. I bought this helmet because I was really curious about all the claims they made. Right? And I thought, what a better way to introduce to the shop than buy one. I took it out and you can see the bugs on it. I rode in it for a full day at Grant Raceway. I rode it on the racetrack and then I rode it here around town on one of my employees' SV650 bikes as well. So I was really excited to give it a shot. Size medium, 58 centimeters, intermediate oval. It fit me perfect. The fit was actually phenomenal. One thing I would like to point out is when you're pulling this helmet on, you'll notice it has a really thick neck roll. That aids in keeping this helmet very quiet. This helmet runs at about 85 decibels. Most of your other helmets out there, especially sport bike oriented helmets, they're gonna be more around the 100 range, a lot louder. I was able to use this on track without earplugs. I never do that. Around town, no need for earplugs whatsoever. The thing was super quiet around town. When you're on the racetrack on that R6 and that thing's screaming at 15,000 RPM, there's certainly a lot more noise from the bike, but the wind noise portion was very quiet. It was almost scary quiet at times. Anyways, when you're putting this helmet on, you notice this nice thick neck roll. What you need to do is you need to get a hold of it by the straps, okay, and open it up a little bit. You got to open that neck roll up so it'll go over the top of your head. One of the secrets behind the quietness is this thick neck roll. Consistent sizing. I think for most folks out there, if you're normally a medium and most common helmets with an intermediate oval head form, order a medium, you're going to get a good fit. Conversely, large, extra large, so on and so forth. Size medium, this helmet weighed 3.45 pounds on our digital shipping scale. That's really lightweight, especially when you consider that it also offers a drop down inner screen, which normally adds weight to a helmet. They were still able to keep the weight down. The balance from this helmet was phenomenal. Okay, I didn't notice anything that stuck out in terms of poor balance. It really felt good on the head. Airflow, sneaky good airflow. And what's odd is you're with a high airflow helmet, you're used to all this wind noise rushing in. They've done a lot on this helmet. We'll show you some of this in a second video when I totally disassemble this and reassemble it. They've done a lot of things to ensure it'll be as quiet as possible, even with that airflow. Understand, this helmet exchanges 2.7 gallons of air a second when you're riding. That is a ton of airflow. They do that with a combination of the vent here on the top, right? This is a multi-position vent. We've got a vent here at the chin. This one is really primarily to bring air up onto the shield. It does help circulate it around inside the helmet, but your primary airflow is going to be here and the extraction system they've built into this. Here are the extractors in the crown, and then down here towards the ridge of the helmet. These really work. You're riding, it pulls the air out of the helmet. Okay, so you're exchanging 2.7 gallons a second. I've never heard another manufacturer that boasted what the rate of exchange is for the ventilation system. I mean, these guys are really dialed. Here is a key part that I need to point out to you. This helmet has 
a built-in tuning system, seasonal tuning system for the vents of the helmet, okay, for the intake vents. It's these two triangle-shaped flaps right here. When these flaps are in the up position, can you see the holes in the EPS there, Josh? When those are in the up position, they're going to block those holes, okay? And realistically, I think a lot of them are kind of coming that way out of the box, okay? And that's kind of the winner feature. This helmet's designed to be ridden in year-round. A key point with this helmet and the C3, when you get your helmet, okay, look inside, see where these are at, and make sure you fold them out of the way if you're going to be riding in the warmer seasons. You have a look at some of the videos that are out there that show the factory. It's crazy clean. These people are working in white lab coats. Let's talk for a minute about the shell, okay? The shell thickness on this is the most consistent in the industry. They have a proprietary, a guarded proprietary technique to deliver extremely even shell thickness that allows the shell to be thinner because you don't end up with thick spots and thin spots. When you mold a shell by hand, when you do it largely by hand, it's nearly impossible to get it even. They have this dialed to the point where all the material that they use to build the shell, the fibers, right, they're cut in exact size pieces. And then they use a proprietary type of molding where there's actually some compression and some heat that's used. And then they test it by setting it on top of a light bulb and one of the workers at Schubert inspects the shell to make sure all the fibers are lined up in the right spots, the thickness looks good and even the overlap is proper. Very high level of manufacturing expertise with this helmet. Just like a German car, most of us have come to understand the Germans for their engineering, their tight tolerances, and their passion for quality. Made in Germany, right, and that's part of the reason the price on this is, you know, it might seem high, but there's a lot of value here because it's really a quality product. Shield mechanism, that's another big thing for everybody, right? How hard is it to change the shield? Up position, got a release trigger here, got a release trigger over here. You can kind of hear it disengage, and then just roll it off just like that. Reinstallation is very simple as well. Get the shield into position, and there are two very large cutouts that that shield slides back in. It'll be very clear when you go to do this. You can see it's really that hard. Super easy. Let's talk about the drop-down mechanism. The actuator is here on the left side of the helmet. It is cable driven. There are two cables that are up inside the EP, between the EPS and the shell of this helmet, right? So this thing is actually driven from both sides. Most drop-downs are only actuated from one side. It makes the motion a little uneasy, and it increases the chances for parts to wear. These things were built with true heirloom quality. They're meant to be able to pull all the value out of it by using it through its entire life cycle and enjoying a high level of performance. And one of the things that I think clearly illustrates that is the cable drive, both sides for this drop down inner shield. Outer shield, we showed you how to change it. It also comes with a pin lock insert. I rode with this helmet in the morning at Grant, it was in the 50s, in the low 50s, and that's a prime fog period, no doubt, okay? I noticed that with the shield down, and when I'd exhale, I got just a little bit of fog, but with any type of forward motion at all without the pin lock, I mean, it cleared just like that, okay? So, unless the conditions are really bad, I don't really think the pin lock is gonna be necessary. Class one optics, both shields, the inner and the outer, which is important. I rode with this, and I prefer a tinted shield, but I rode with the shield down, the inner shield on the track. I couldn't even tell that I was looking through two shields. It really, and I was kind of uneasy about it at first when I went out there, because I'd never done that with a helmet before. It's always been a traditional dark smoke screen. It made no difference to me whatsoever. The optics were great. It comes down far enough in the field of vision that I didn't find I had any weird transition to deal with while I was out there riding. So I think they've done a nice job of that. There's plenty of travel to it. Anti-roll-off system. This is something that is unique and proprietary 
to Schubert. You can see these rivets right back here. These rivets essentially attach to, let me see if I can pull this out a little bit. There is a strap. It looks a lot like the helmet neck strap, okay, that attaches to that rivet and then it loops through the actual chin strap of the helmet. This, when everything's tightened up, does a couple of different things. One, it helps to dial the neck roll in for a better fit and more quietness. Two, it helps to prevent the helmet from rolling off, which is key. You'll notice also with the S2, we have a quick release helmet system. It's adjustable, so you can adjust the fit for yourself. Perfectly safe, and it's nice. It was actually a real convenience. There's no D-ring to fumble with. You just pull on the release, it comes undone to latch it up. It's got like a micro adjustment, tightens up quite nicely. Reflectives. Neck roll has reflectives here on the back. All the stickers that you see on the helmet, also reflective. Come to the front, reflective, and up here in the brow, I don't know if you can see this, right in this area right here, Josh, there are two panels that are highly reflective as well. They don't really appear when you look at them that they would be, but this helmet offers true 360 degree reflectability, which is definitely a big safety feature. Completely removable, washable, replaceable interior. Comes with this super nice helmet bag. Also comes with a chin curtain that can be removed or installed. I chose to ride without it, right? What this does, it helps to enhance the quietness of the helmet by really further calming the wind in this area. So if you feel like that's an issue, you can ride with this installed. This helmet will also accept a, a to-becoming communication system. It has, to date, the largest built-in antenna that is actually right in the EPS. It'll have a range of a half a mile, which will be the longest of any communication system out there. It's going to be a cardo system that goes with this. It's going to be here, we think, right around August or so and it's going to be pretty sweet for sure. A couple other key points. You see these little diamond shapes right here on the helmet shield. These are turbulators. They discovered in their wind tunnel, which is also super trick, one of the two quietest in the entire world. But by putting these here, it got the air to kind of spin and roll up. A lot of times with just a straight cut shield, the air wants to roll over and try and come in and penetrate between the shield and the gasket. By putting those turbulators there, it gets to spin up, comes off, once again, works to keep the helmet even quieter. Downforce. This is probably heavily influenced by Michael Schumacher, F1, right? And after his F1 career, quite illustrious, decided to do some motorcycle racing. They work very hard on this helmet to achieve proper downforce so you don't have any helmet lift when riding. Did it work? Yes, it worked. The stability of this helmet was great. There was zero lift. And this was really a painstaking process. They went through hundreds of clay molds to get this right, working in that wind tunnel. It's a very sophisticated piece of equipment here. Very sophisticated. I could talk on and on and on and on about this. It's a great helmet, I highly recommend it. I feel good about the purchase that I made. And yeah, I got it for dealer cost. I saved a couple of bucks. It was still expensive. I'm gonna use this helmet quite a bit. It's gonna have great use between the street and the racetrack. There's a lot of us out there that we're doing both. We like to do some street rides. We like to do some track duty. This helmet is totally at home in either place. And then it has the creature comforts by being able to accept that cardo system that will be available very soon to really take this to the next level when you're on the street. And it's literally built right in to the neck roll of the helmet. Very easy to install, tunable speakers. It's a super cool deal. If you're interested in more information, we're going to have a second follow-up video. I'm going to completely disassemble the S2, give you a high-level look from the inside out, and then show you how to put it back together. Thanks for watching. I'm Brian Van, sportbiketractor.com, all new Schubert S2 full face helmet.